Well, Hayden, congratulations. A good one for Bay of Plenty and non-Bay of Plenty type conditions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was uh, a bit different out there for the boys and uh, yesterday was absolutely freezing. I don't, can't remember playing in such cold conditions and uh, I was an on-counter yesterday and uh, yeah, the boys played really well so it was good to, good to see them play really, really solid out there all week. So uh, yeah, good win. Were you surprised to see the course bounce back so well after that uh, torrential conditions? Yeah, absolutely. I had to go out and play oh, one and a bit holes yesterday, and um, oh, when we when we left to come back, uh, there was water all over the greens. But an hour and a half, two hours, um, and yeah, the greens were fine. So they weren't weren't too soft in most areas. So and then today they were nice and firm. So really good. So what was the winning formula you think for the, for the team performing so consistently uh, over the weekend? Um, really, just having kind of everyone who was kind of battling or not playing so well, just fight to the end and uh, try and make as many pars and birdies coming home. So uh, everyone pretty much tried to tried to yeah minimise mistakes and that pretty much <laughs> kept a, it there. It's a tough competition to win, isn't it? So many good golfers, so many good teams. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think pretty much all the, the top guns were here this week. So um, yeah, it's good to see see our boys triumph. How many of your guys had been here before? Uh, th- two of us, I think. Just two of us. So myself and Landon. Yeah. Did that previous experience uh, stand in your good stead, give the guys some tips? Yeah, absolutely. We knew it was going to be tough. It's always pretty tough down here with the weather-wise. Um, it's always quite windy, so I um, haven't had this cold before, but yeah, definitely um, told the boys just to be careful about what to hit off some tees, um, potentially aiming quite some distance to the right or left of the, some, some of the greens coming in, so yeah, and always try and miss it in, some, in the open sides of the greens make it a lot easier. It's a good challenge this course on the perfect day, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Pro Am day was, uh, oh sorry, Am Am day was was probably the the best day we had. Nice calm conditions, and some of the guys were firing some pretty good scores out there. But I think Chizzy had about a seven under or something, so definitely scorable. But yeah, I struggled myself. And what's the likelihood of the team staying together? I know people like to turn pros, and it's possible you're likely to lose anyone. Yeah, I think uh, it should be stay pretty much the same for the. For the tower um, in a couple of weeks, and then there's myself turning pro and uh, potentially a couple heading to the states on scholarships. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next coming years. And talk to Phil Aiken about how difficult it is to become a pro these days. What's your plan? What's your first step in the, on that ladder? Uh, my plan is to, to head to Australia at the end of the year for the uh, uh, tour school there, um, starting on the 17th of December. So that'll be. Uh, testing times for myself and a few other lads as well, so it should be good. Exciting though, isn't it, uh, to think that you could venture out and, and make a living? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, exciting and uh, just got to play well, so yeah, it's good. Well done again on the team effort. Thank you. Well, Vaughan South and gave it a good rattle. They, uh, I think he led at one point, but just uh, just couldn't go all the way. Yeah, we were leading uh, by one stroke going into the third round, uh, going into the final round, but yeah, just couldn't quite get it done and um, I tried my best to hang in there and try to give the team some, some spirit, but yeah, just couldn't quite get there in the end. It's always going to be a battle of attrition this uh, weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, this this plays havoc with your mind, this sort of weather, so um, yeah, just well done to Bay of Plenty. They've obviously played fantastic golf. So what is the strategy when the wind's so fickle, when it's so strong, you having to reassess your every hole? Yeah, um, I think you've got to take a bit more safer lines, so you can't get as aggressive as you'd like to, can't get at some pins as the way you'd like to. Um, so that, yeah, that plays a big part, so some smart golfs in order. And an advantage for the local guys, I mean, you've uh, you've all played here many times before, and probably not in two dissimilar days. Yeah, well, the tournament's held here at Otisara every year, and I think for the ones that have played the course before, it does provide a pretty good advantage, because... There's holes that the tees get put up and if you don't know the wind direction and you're playing here for the first time that you know you you really get put under stress of where to where to place your ball. What about the greens? Did they vary markedly with the amount of water that came and went during the course of the weekend? The course has taken a hiding. Like uh, the weather really wasn't in our favour. Um, but the course has held up really well. The greens are the best I've ever seen at this course, so a fantastic job to the green staff there, so they just their credit, their credit to the course. I'll well, just uh, run through your 2014 year, your competitive year for us, because it's about a year since we last spoke. Um, is it, what are the, some of the highlights for you? 
The whole lot for me, I uh, got over to the States this year. Um, that was pretty cool, but it didn't quite finish as highly as I would have liked um, from January through to um, August. And then I worked really hard on my game once I got back from the States um, from August, September. And I made the world's team to go to Japan. And um, basically my work paid off and I played so much better in Japan. Finished 85th at uh, the Eisenhower. Uh, the team finished 22nd. Um, and it was just more rewarding for me, actually, and uh, the game just keeps on kicking on, so that's fantastic. All right, last time, well, look, every time I talk to you, I ask you the perennial question, uh, is it time to now test your, test your feet in the, in the professional waters? Yeah, I think it is. Um, for me, I, I don't just like setting a timeline. The way I'd like to do it is, um, like in an ideal world, if you could go pro or go to a tour school every six months, once you get your card, then it's time to go. Um, but I'm just uh, I'm throwing myself out there. I'm going to two Q schools this year, uh, and that's to try qualify on the Australasian tour and the Asian tour. And with the planning of once I ground my feet, I'd like to um, maybe go to the Japan tour once I'm a bit more grounded. So is that Aussie tour first uh, December? Uh, it's in January. It, um, I'm exempt straight into final stage through the Eisenhower teams. Yeah. So uh, there's two stages of both Aussie Q school and Asian Q School, so uh, exemption into the final stage of Australasian is a big help. And how many do they actually let through at the end of it? Where do you have to finish? Yeah, so there's three categories that you can get. Um, a top 50 gets some sort of category status, but it doesn't get you into the million dollar events. So I'm setting a target of the top 25, and that'll see me successfully get into the, to the tier one events, which is what we really want. So did, would that give you order to make an entry to every uh, professional Australasian tournament? It wouldn't get me into every one, but there's um, six tournaments, tier one, that are a million dollar plus, and it'd guarantee me into four, four out of the six, so that's fantastic. And what about backing? Uh, will this cost a bit of, bit of dosh? Yeah, absolutely does, and uh, I'm really trying to get some proposals together now, just finalising up a few things and... Uh, to get out there to the community and um, try to get some help for my first few years as a rookie pro. Must be very exciting times for you and your family to watch on. It absolutely mm -hmm. is fantastic. And I think it's great for Southland as well, being able to play here um, a few months before I'm looking at going on this new venture um, and to finish a great tournament this week is just incredible in front of a home crowd. There's no doubt you put in the yard, so you put in a long slog as, a, as an amateur. You've travelled the world. You deserve a break, don't you? Yeah, uh, I don't think a break will be coming too um, too too soon, but um, certainly some some rewarding carrots will be coming soon. So, uh, is that your next uh, tournament? Yeah, qualifying score. Have you got anything in between? Yeah, I got I got one more tournament in between. It's the Tyro Interprovincial. So, all these provinces essentially are going to Hamilton this year for the New Zealand Interprovincials, and that's a match play format. So it's team versus team, player versus player, rather than playing the course. So uh, I'll play for Southland one more time and, and then hopefully be on my way. Trophy would be a lovely way to finish your amateur career. I, I agree. I hope it make it happen, Tom. <laughs>